today to see if I still feel I focused on the pain the only thing that's real the needle tears a hole the old familiar sting try to kill it all the way but I remember everything what have I become my sweetest friend everyone I know goes away in the end and you could have it all my empire of dust I will let you down I will make you hurt I wear this crown of thorns Upon my liar's chair Full of broken thoughts I cannot repair Beneath the stains of time disappear you are someone else but I am still right here what have I become my sweetest friend everyone I know goes away in the end and you could have it all of dust I will let you down I will make you hurt if I could start again a million miles away I would keep myself I would find a way Hear these words from the first 17 verses of Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise, for you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Welcome to Rhythm and Word for the week of February 22nd, Ash Wednesday. My name is Rocky Suppinger and I am one of the pastors here at Fourth Presbyterian Church, which brings you this spiritual pause for the middle of your week or whenever works for you. Together with Amr and Leslie, Marcus and Brian, our jazz quartet, I hope that this brief interval of music and scripture and meditation 
offers you nourishment on your journey of faith. Tonight we enter the season of Lent, 40 days set apart by the church to prepare ourselves for the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection. We take for our guide tonight and every week during Lent the Hebrew psalmist whose prayers and pleas will sound out our path during this penitential season. Tonight that cry is for mercy, for cleansing and restoration from the psalmist's own wrongdoings, the hurt he has inflicted upon those closest to him. The prefix to Psalm 51 tells us that it is a psalm of David when the prophet Nathan came to him just after he'd been with Bathsheba. If you don't know that biblical story, you find it in 2 Samuel chapter 11. David, the much lauded king of Israel, covets another man's wife and then uses his power to have her husband killed. The prophet then comes to the king with a message from God. You did this. In secret, you did this, and I know you did it. And David is chastened and repents immediately, telling the prophet, I have sinned before the Lord. Psalm 51 that we just heard expands upon the king's contrition. I know my wrongdoings, it says. I have committed evil. Though our circumstances are surely unique, we've all come face to face with our own wrongdoings, things that we knew better than to do but still did, as well as things we ought to have done and did not do. The cry of the penitent king is ours as well, for we too let people down. We too make others hurt. We name our sin and our guilt, especially in Lent, as a gesture of repentance and sorrow and absolute dependence upon God's mercy in our lives. These are things traditionally signified by ashes. It goes back to the very beginning of the biblical story when the first people were expelled from the Garden of Eden with the pronouncement, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Adorning our head or our hand with ashes on this day testifies to the truth about who we are. We are created beings with limitations and blind spots. We do not always choose the right. We will not live forever. The things we spend our lives striving for amount to empires of dirt. Believe it or not, this is good news. <laughs> Naming the place where our strength and goodness ends allows us to see where God's strength and God's goodness starts right at the point where we feel at our weakest and our worst. Christians call that place grace. For as the Apostle Paul shared in his second letter to the Corinthians, God taught him that grace is sufficient and that God's power is made perfect in our weakness. Let us pray. God, we confess before you our weakness and our limitation and our wrongdoing not to wallow in guilt or shame, but to offer ourselves to you anew, chastened and ready to grow in faith, to be used by you to pronounce the good news of your salvation in our lives each day. Amen. Go in peace.